All right, so welcome all to the second day of the school integrability dualities and deformations. We will start today with uh, Anna Rettore, actually the last lecture of the introduction to classical and quantum integrability. So please, Anna. Thank you. Thank you. So, so yesterday, the last thing we did was to, to construct the transfer matrix and to prove that the transfer matrix in two different spectral parameters commute. So we did this and prove it. But I was always showing you some uh, schematic way to draw and I forgot to do this for the transfer matrix. So let me do it now. Okay, so we, when we look these, uh, this, the monodromy matrix, it's um, a product of many lux operators. Oh, this, uh, yeah, that, that is the thing for the sharing screen of Zoom. I will have to write down. So this is equal. Until the first one. So we did that this yesterday. And if you remember, every time we had this L, we represented as the crossing of two, two lines, as two lines crossing, uh, one in this auxiliary parameter, auxiliary space, and one in the physical space. So, so we had that this monodromy was represented as some line. Which was the auxiliary space. And then we had many ones corresponding to the lax operators. But if you look, what we are doing now is to trace in this alpha. So what we are doing is basically to connect. So usually the way we represent the transfer matrix is just some uh, for, for this uh, periodic spin chain. It's just uh, this object with many, with the N and lines. So this is just some schematics and to record and remember a bit what we did yesterday. But I promise you the conserved charges. Oh, this is not a new file. <laughs> Sorry, I thought automatically new. And and now if we have the, this transfer matrix, the way we compute these conserved charges is through an expansion. So we can write EZ as some, um, let's put the charges immediately, but it's, uh, it's just some, I think I did this yesterday as well, but uh, let's just do it quickly because we will compute today uh, the first two charges just to simplify. So we apply I derivatives to construct the, the charge uh, I plus one on this transfer matrix. So it's just applied this derivative and send O oh, in the log of TZ. This log, as I said yesterday, is because usually we want uh, some local Hamiltonian when you are studying this, uh, this type of spin chain I was explaining. So we want uh, that uh, if we know the density the Hamiltonians like for two sides, we can just sum over all of them to construct the, the total Hamiltonian. So something proportional to this. So let's let's do the first one now. So the first charge is 
when we in i starts from zero so all the integers uh, bigger than zero so bigger or equal and then zero so the first one is we just do not apply any derivative so q q1 is just a log of t0 and then now for all the calculations that i'm doing uh, at this first part, I will just do everything for three sides, just so we can have more or less control what we are doing. It's a bit uh, easier, but things gen generalize uh, uh, very easily. It's, you just have to keep applying the same thing. So, okay, so T of zero is the trace over alpha of for three sides. So it's alpha three, alpha two, and alpha one of zero. But if you remember, we considered these as like the R yesterday, like equal to the R matrix. Uh, so it has the same regularity property we said yesterday. What this means, this means that we have these proportional to the permutation operator. And I, I will also ignore all the, the just the functions like, uh, because all these things have like, I don't know, uh, this is actually equal to sinh of eta times, but just, uh, just to make it simpler, I will just uh, consider uh, ignore all these because they're all overall factors. So they will not uh, contribute in this matrix part. So we just, I will just ignore them. Okay, so what we have if we, if we, okay, this is at zero. So we have trace of alpha or B alpha three, B alpha two, B alpha one. And then it starts like the, those, uh, those calculations I, 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 let me make a bit more. Um, those calculations I did at the very beginning last morning, which was uh, that if you want to switch indices in, uh, in some uh, matrix operator, you, and if you have, I don't know, IJ, this changes I by K, so this is, um, so we will keep using these many times here. So this operator can be P as well. So we will use these to and P in P squares to one because P was this matrix. So if you see it squares to one. So you always can, um, if this is P, so we have a E, I, K, P, I, J, P, I, K, is P, K, J. So you always can, um, can just take something like this and you, mut you multiply by P, I, K in both sides because squares to one, you have P, I, K, P. And these things uh, look very confusing when I'm doing, but once you do like two or three times, you have all the intuition to know which ones you have to choose. So, or how you, so in our case, this, just using this, we can write this thing as P alpha one, P one, two. Why we are doing that? Because we want to solve, uh, we want something local or something, we want something that will, will, We'll be able to write without depend on this auxiliary parameter because this auxiliary parameter was just like a trick we use it it's not physical for for our purposes so we want to get rid of it somehow so so this is why so if you see this p already doesn't depend on the trace so if i want i can remove it from the trace already now this one it's p alpha one P one three, so I, I just kept using this. So 
So d of zero gave until now trace of alpha the alpha one. And then this is one three and one two doesn't depend on alpha, so we can put outside. And then this is a nice exercise. I left as an exercise, but you can prove that this is proportional to identity. Always, always, if you have one one permutation with any physical space, and you have a, you take the trace on the auxiliary space. Actually, it doesn't need to be auxiliary or anything. It's just if you have. A, Two indices here, and you trace under one of them permutation, we always get uh, uh, something proportional to identity. So, this is always the trick. We try to take everything out of the trace and get something like this at the end because this we can send, this is just one. Okay, so the first charge then is log, it was log of t of zero, it's p13, p12. Oh, it's log of this. We call usually this IP, like uh, the momentum, a momentum operator. Because if you see, if you isolate these, you have P12, P13, P12. P1, 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 and this is it's just some translation operator. You can think of some translation operator. And if you act with this on the chain, if you have something with uh, three sides, so if you have, uh, let's say, if you have this and you act with this, you switch these two first because of the P12, then you get And then you switch one with three. Did I make correct? Yes. And then one with three. So you're you're kind of uh, just moving a uh, spin to the chain some somehow. So this is why we interpret this as momentum. So it it really works as a translation of a of a particle in the spin chain. Like just just moving in the for uh, some other side. If you have any questions, please uh, interrupt me. The second charge was the first derivative with respect to TZ. Oops, this doesn't depend on Z. And uh, and then send Z to zero. So let's let's do the same for three sides again. Oh, and I keep forget the logging log. Sorry. And uh, okay, so the log here is, is very important, as I said, uh, just uh, for locality. So what we have is t minus one. So when you derivate, we have t minus one of z, but then we are sending z to zero, so I already put. And then you derivate tz and send z to zero as well. So this operation, it means you derivate first with uh, respect to um, z, and then you send z to zero. So the, the log is responsible for the appearance of this term. And, uh, and this term we, we already basically compu computed because we computed t of, uh, the t of uh, zero was this p13, p12. So we just need to invert. And this is also a nice exercise that I left uh, in, the, in the file, but uh, it basically what it does is P12, uh, the inverse is just. And this is because if you see, if you multiply these by these, it gives one. So you keep using P square, that P squares to one. Uh, so you just have to do some kind of trick if you wanna prove in general, but it's very, it's just very simple. Okay, so we know this, but we want to compute this object. Okay. 
so First, we apply the uh, uh, derivative on the first, so it's just use chain, chain, and then send to zero. Plus, we apply them in the second. Plus you apply on the third. And trace, you can write, uh, it's linear, so you can write in uh, the sum of the traces, like uh, each of these has its own trace kind of, but like to compute these three terms is very similar. Like you need to just use different kind of combination of permutations. So I will compute the first one and leave the two others for you. So let's focus on the first term. So the first term is proportional to Oops, sorry, alpha, it's trace of alpha. These we don't know what to do yet, so we just keep it. But these are proportional to permutations again, so we have P alpha two, P alpha one. Let me just take the thing we had the around we can compute. Yeah, I don't know how to use this. I will, it's better to just write again, <laughs> sorry. But like this one, just for the same reasons as before, is just, this is exactly the same one we did before. So it's just P alpha one, P alpha two. But now we can do the same thing because if you remember it, does, it didn't matter if it was P or any operator, we can pass through and change alpha uh, by one. So if you change alpha by one, we get it. This is P alpha one L one three P. Oops, this is wrong. It's one two. Sorry. So yeah, it's exactly the same as before. I just wrote wrong now, but the and the trick was the same again, like we, we just try to remove everything from the trace, except the one that we know how to take the trace. So what we have, we have these that's proportional to identity and we have these thing. Okay, but this was just uh, uh, P prime of zero. So we found that trip, trip three prime of zero is proportional to L one three prime zero. But the total Q two was T minus one of zero, T prime of zero. This we computed and it was, I made something wrong, just a second. There is something weird. Mm -hmm. Just a second, I missed something. Or this thing wrong here. Oh, 
Oh, oh, oh, oh, sorry. It's all wrong. I just forgot to do one step. Using the same kind of um, trick you use it, we can just rewrite. It's just that is usually usually much use, much more useful if you want to do schematic uh, like systematically to have uh, the ones that are on the sequence. So you, if you, you pref we prefer uh, P12, P23, then P13. So you can just transform these in P12, P23 just by using that same uh, trick. You can put the P12 to here and change uh, one by two. This becomes a two tree. And then the, the, inverse, the, the inverse is just P23, P12. Did you follow? Sorry, I, I, I messed up a bit, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it was all correct. I already had discussed it. I just forgot that, uh, and it would work, but you have to do many more operations at the end. So that, that's the only difference. So, so here we use it, that trick one, once more to just to have uh, one, two, two, three, like the sequence, the ones in the sequence. Okay, so now we have the, now everything will work. Yeah, we have a, so we just compute that this is P23, P12, and this is L13 of zero, P12. But this, from that beginning, we just change one by two. So this becomes L23 of zero. So at this point, we only assumed the, uh, that uh, the, this lux operator is regular, we didn't need to, to assume anything else. So this step, like we, we, we would get exactly this for any, any if you were, were using any lux or any, any, any R matrix, it doesn't matter. Because you just use it properties of permutation and the regular, regularity of the R matrix. So this is general. Uh, and if you compute the other two terms, what you get is P12, um, oops. And P1, sorry, P31. So in total, you would get something proportional to the sum. So look, we have one, two, we have two, three, and we have three, one, and we had a periodic change. So uh, if we want it to be in the sequence, here we will have a four, but uh, a four becomes one because it's, uh, it's uh, periodic. So this is exactly a periodic chain with uh, the Hamiltonian for a periodic chain with side three. And it's local because we have i, i plus one, uh, i, i plus one. So this calculation uh, kind of uh, works uh, anyway if you, for any L. Now, if you want the explicit one, you'd have to write that. Uh, I, I remember, if you remember, I wrote um, of uh, J as those, uh, coefficients times um, sigma x j sigma oops this one is the sigma alpha x sigma j x so we had that those explicit formulas but and all the dependence on Z is kind of in from here. So it, you just really apply the derivative on that formula and you put to zero and you can get your, and then I left as an exercise. If you do this, uh, you can get exactly to ma map it to the very beginning to that Hamiltonian of the, of the XXZ spin chain that I wrote at the very beginning of the quantum, uh, quantum part. Was it confused? Uh, any, anybody has any question?
Yeah, so here the charge Q2 gives you the Hamiltonian and it works for the axis of spin chain, but is it a general statement or, I mean, does it work for all models, all integrable models? Oh, the Hamiltonian? Uh, uh, the fact that uh, when you compute Q2 in the way that you defined it, you get the Hamiltonian. Yes. Yes, for the, for the, if you do all the construction of the transformative in the way I did with the same assumptions, yes, it always will give you the, the Hamiltonian. Okay. So uh, the first will always be permutation and the, uh, the first will be uh, momentum and the second the Hamiltonian. And then what, what will happen if you see, uh, if you start to compute higher charges is that you, you have more, um, more terms, you have like, a, these, you have just i and i plus one. If you compute Q3, you have a, a third, a third like i plus two as well. Mm -hmm. And then if you keep, uh, so you, if you put more size and you keep computing, you, the higher charges kind of um, are like a higher terms like of kind of interaction. Range, like yeah. there, yeah, mm -hmm. they, they act in more sides uh, at the end. Okay. Yeah, and then second question. So here you, you define the conserved charges with taking Z equal going to zero, and then you were able to use the property with the permutation operator. But in principle, I could also take Z going to something else, right? But then maybe I get a mixture of- uh, like I think it depends if you want- uh, Yeah, depends if you want locality or what, and it depends what lags you started because some people start with the lags, for example, with a shifted R matrix. So um, the lags is like, I don't know, R of um, Z, Z plus, plus half or plus something. And then you have to compensate when you compute the Hamiltonian if you want something uh, local in, in this kind of format. But, but this actually changes a lot if you, because we are doing periodic chain, like when you start to do a bit more complicated things and putting boundary conditions, you can, you can do many more different things. Uh, this, like for this construction, it, this is the, I think I don't see how to, okay, let me think more because if you send, I don't see actually how, like for this construction, how to send Zeta to that to something else and still having have something local away. Because you need somehow to take things out of the trace if you want, because you want something that will depend only on your physical spaces. Mm -hmm. So I just don't see a way to, but for open chains, there are some other situations that you can compensate somehow. And uh, you have like combinations of Rs that have some, because sometimes you have like um, the lax operator, the product of some lax operator satisfying some property, and then you can use these because it's proportional to identity or proportional to some P. Mm -hmm. You can use this as tricks for specific cases, but in general, I'd say no. Okay, thanks. Uh, a related question, if I can ask. Uh, the eigenvalue of all these operator um, are the same independently of Z, right? Um, the eigenvalues for this operator is the same as what? Uh, I'm saying that uh, t of z uh, commute with t of z, z prime uh, of your transfer matrix. So the eigenvalue should not depend on z. Is that correct? The eigenvalue should not depend on? On the auxiliary parameter uh, z. Oh, it doesn't for this kind of, um, do you remember I said I, I was computing our using our matrices of difference form? So our matrix can be written in terms of the difference or just one parameter. And then if we have like just this, let's just write one parameter. You send Z to, to zero because it's the way you get this, uh, this um, local Hamiltonian. But if you, if you have a Hamiltonian that, uh, depends on Z1, that's not of difference form. What you do actually when you apply the, the you get something similar, but you send, uh, you usually send Z2 to Z1 and not uh, Z to zero. So Hamiltonians that come from uh, an R matrix that are of difference form, they are constant in the spectral parameter. And the ones that are, um, can come from, um, and our matrix that's not non different of non difference form they depend on the spectral parameter so they you can use uh, you can get some um, 
some nice things because you can, uh, I don't know, in principle, you can give some interpretation for the spectral parameter at the level of the Hamiltonian and do some calculations. Uh, I don't know, in uh, Hubbard model, for example, is of this type and then, uh, yeah, it's, uh, and then the one, one spectral parameter appears in explicitly in the Hamiltonian when you compute it. And then it will work for, and then in principle that Hamiltonian is integrable for any value of that spectral parameter, but for physical reasons, sometimes they choose the spectral parameter or the, the value that you want for the experiment and condensed matter or something. But yeah. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay, so, so if you want to compute more, more charges, you just keep applying derivatives and sending z to zero in this construction and you get higher and higher um, charges. But the, the type of calculation you make are exactly the same. You always keep uh, using permutation to change things and take out of the trace. And then you use this property that uh, uh, trace of alpha, p alpha, anything, it's always proportional to one. Okay, so as we discussed it yesterday, all these charges and uh, the Hamiltonian and all these charges, they grow exponentially with the number of sides. So this is a two N by two N matrix. So in these cases is the, um, uh, 64 um, by 64 matrix, it's still doable. I think um, for like uh, this kind of spin chain, you maybe can do until 10. You can diagonalize this, um, this uh, Hamiltonian for, um, for, I don't know, 10 sides, but I think that's, that's it. May, maybe a bit more if you're really good on mathematical or you have uh, some very good uh, computer, but uh, you have problems. So what people usually do is to compute the bad ansatz. And that's what I will explain now is, it's an alternative, uh, like instead of just putting the matrix there and, uh, and I analyze it, we have like a kind of a set of polynomial equations that we have to solve to, to fix the eigenvalue and eigenvectors. So I'll explain now how to construct that. Um, are there any more questions about this part? Because maybe now we will change a lot uh, what we are doing. Okay, it's the same subject, but uh, yeah, the, the focus will change a bit. Okay. Okay, so what we'll do is what's called algebraic. That ends it. There are many types of bed ansatz that can be used depending what you want or what's your, because if you want uh, like this one, will give you both the eigenvalues. And eigenvectors, but, but if you only need the eigenvalues that are another type, there's another type that, uh, I don't know, for, for this type of, we are doing this uh, algebraic is, uh, it, it's this fine, but when you want uh, to, to deal with um, like uh, models with higher algebras, high rank algebras, uh, you need to use uh, an alternative way, which is called nested, which is quite uh, more, um, it's, <laughs> it's a bit more work. So if you just need the eigenvalues, there are um, better alternatives uh, to, easier alternatives to compute them. But if you need both, uh, usually algebraic uh, but uh, or the nested for the higher versions, uh, you, it's what you need. And the, the starting point here is that uh, if you remember yesterday, I wrote the lux in two ways. I, I wrote the lux uh, in that way I was talking about before or just a, bit, a few minutes ago, but there was something that we had wrote, uh, written in terms of um, this sinh of z plus, we had this, uh, let me write explicitly, just so it's f sigma minus.
And I said that this would be more useful for today. And uh, I think the, the reason will become more clear now. And okay, so the idea is that the transfer matrix is the trace over this alpha of your monodromy matrix. And the idea here is to write this monodromy matrix, which is the product of all to those, uh, these, all these uh, lax operators until one. The idea here, okay, this is still true when we use this, but the idea here is to write these as a matrix of matrices. And then here, I think it's important I make, I make a, a correction. Yesterday I said that any two operators that act on different sides, something like a commute. And this is true if the entries of these operators are functions. If they are matrices, this is not true because then the matrices themselves cannot commute maybe inside. So this is true if A is just, just depends on uh, A and B, A and B depend on uh, scalar functions like no, ma no, no matrix on functions. But in this case, for example, we will use, uh, we will construct, I don't know, T alpha in, this, in the way I said yesterday that doesn't occur, but uh, you still cannot pass T alpha to T beta because of um, this is not true when you are, you have a, your matrix, your matrix elements are matrices themselves, because then uh, maybe E will not commute with B, etc. Okay, so so the fir the first step is to just assume this. We just assume that uh, the monodromy is written in terms of A B C D, and you still don't know this. But the only the way to 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 find them is just you compute these uh, for I don't know two, three, four sides. You compute for for um, just to get some intuition and you get this uh, this uh, explicitly and then i suggest you compute in this way because if we compute using these matrices the trace of alpha so, oops alpha z that this is just az plus dz and this will be very useful. So if we keep using this kind of, of um, representation, it, uh, it's much, much easier to do everything. Oops. And then, okay, I said we don't know if A, B, C, D in principle commute. And we don't want to have to, for each uh, number of sides have to discover that again. So what you use is to use that RTT relation we defined it yesterday, which was uh, this. And then R is the R matrix that we had on the beginning with those cinches of Z plus eta, et cetera. And in T alpha and T beta are the following, like before when we had, when we discussed that we had one spectral parameter, we put them, uh, we put it in, at the first uh, side and, uh, and now we have two. So we just think of these T alpha as uh, t, this t, cross identity, Oops. t of z cross one, which is
And then here you just put this matrix inside the first, so you have AZ, zero, AZ. Here is zero, so, no, wait, so this on B, so this is AZ, zero, zero, AZ. Oops, and C. So we just kept putting the second matrix inside the first. And the other one will be to put TZ on the second space. So we'll I forgot the alpha, there is alpha everywhere here. Sorry. And here there is beta everywhere. So now we put identity on the first and TZ on the second. And then again, we put the second matrix inside the first, but this time we have something like uh, AZ, BZ, CZ, DZ, zero, 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 because this just multiplies by a factor of zero. Usually you just put this on Mathematica, you don't do by hand. I'm just doing here just to give you some intuition about the, how, the, how these matrices look like. But the point is that you write these, and then so you have four by four matrices here. The elements are matrices themselves, but, uh, and this R is just the R we had on the beginning. So if we substitute these in both sides, you find some commutation relations. Uh, you have to be careful with Mathematica because if you just put this on Mathematica, it will change the, it will always put A before B. So it's, I, I suggest you to compute left-hand side separately of the right-hand side. And, and because when you put, when you consider like this, you know that Z alpha is always before of Z beta. So if you compute the left-hand side, you can ask Mathematica to, to always put the, the, all the objects with the Z alpha before. And then you can put the right hand side and ask the opposite. And then you subtract just at the end after you kind of taught Mathematica how to do it. You thought because uh, otherwise it just, uh, you just give zero many things because uh, it will just uh, change all the orders you don't want because these objects are matrices. Math math Mathematica doesn't know that, so. So, okay, but if you do this, if you just do this in uh, like this equation and substituting all these and they are, what you find is a set of commutation relations. Uh, they are not uh, all of them useful. And I just realized I didn't choose a very good order to explain because, because yeah, let's, let's save what I said uh, because you don't even know here at this point why you need the computation relation. I just realized I, I messed up a bit the, the, the explanation. The point is that I, I told you just compute for a few sites these objects. And then uh, what we do is like, we, can, we want to diagonalize the transfer matrix. So let's keep this for a bit. We want to diagonalize this transfer matrix. So we want to act in some, um, in some states. And get the eigenvalue. So this is what we want, we want to do. And, but the first step is to see how this acts on the, on the ground state. So let's act on the ground state first. So this, this, for us was a 
So we know how this acts on the ground state, actually, because if you compute for two, three, four sides, you see that very quickly that you get that AZ on zero is sinh of Z plus eta to the power of the number of sides. So it's, um, uh, and DZ acting on zero is this. So you know these things, but if you compute DZ acting on, on zero, you will get, let's say this is uh, two sides and you had, uh, so we have this, uh, our ground state, that's every, I'm considering everyone uh, up. So if for two sides, you would have these and you compute these, you have, uh, you have uh, a coefficient times this plus, you can compute this explicitly. I have put on the, um, on the notes. But the, the point here is not this coefficient, these coefficients. We not even use them uh, uh, explicitly on this procedure. They don't matter. What matters here is that this B acts as some um, creation operator. So you start with a ground state and it starts to... Okay, so we don't know yet how to, to, to diagonalize the whole transfer matrix, but we know the ground state. Uh, we, we know how to diagonalize the, how to, to have the eigenvalue for the ground state. And we know that these Bs work as uh, some creation operator. So if you want to construct some, uh, some uh, excited states, these Ms will become clear soon. Oops, it's Z. Z. We know that if we want to create excited states, we can just use B for that because B acts as a creation operator. So the trick is you start with some, uh, you define your, um, your excited states as B of Z1, B of Z2. So, okay, we know how the transfer matrix acts on the ground state. And now we, what we want is to diagonalize for, for the excited states as well. So what we need to do is, okay, we want that when we act with TZ here, we will get something like times this thing again. But like in principle, you cannot guarantee, and actually it's not for all values of, so we introduced all these other, um, we call these um, better roots. Uh, when they satisfy an equation that I will show when, uh, these are the better roots when you, when this is the eigenvalue of your, um, of your transfer matrix. But actually, what we know, what we know explicitly is that uh, T of Z is A plus B, right? A plus D, because we took that trace. And this is our excited state then explicitly. Oops. We have all those Bs. So what we want, we know that acting this B kind of creates, uh, it's, it's like a creation operator, but it's messy. So the, the way to do is we know that's a very, explicit simple formula when you act with A and D on the ground state. So what we want to do really is to move this A through all these Bs until here, because then we know how to act. And we want to do the same with D. So we want to move this D here as well. So, so we want a way to pass A through B and 
B to B. This was what I was, uh, why I was trying to find communication relations before that I went ahead on myself. So, because if we, know, if we know, if we A and B reach there, we just, we, we know uh, immediately that we get this, this answer. So this is a way that we can solve for any number of sides in a very easy way because Okay, so if you continue, continue that calculation to find the computation relations I, 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 was, I was doing before, what you get is that all the P's commute. So you can choose to, to define these in any order because they all commute. And this will play a very important role and later. It will avoid us a lot of calculations. So, so this is an important point. And we also find that AZ BZ1 Let me take care, I write wrong otherwise. And B, is very similar. There's a minus here. So they are very similar. Okay, so now we have all the commutation relations. And then we will start to try to use them to reach there. But we want we want this to be the eigenvalue. So you see, what you see is that uh, uh, there will be some conditions for this Z1 to ZM that we introduced here in order to this be the eigenvalue and the, and the, and the corresponding eigenvector of this, uh, this, this transfer matrix. So now I will start to explain how to, how to, pair, like how to do this calculation and, uh, and and it's a long calculation, so I think we have to stop now if we want to do a break, because, uh, so five minutes or less? Okay, so five minutes. Okay, so let's uh, continue. So we have uh, now the commutation relations and we want to start to pass this to the piece. So what we do, okay, what do you do? What we start usually is we do, we, we do pass one A and one B to the first B. So that's the first, uh, the first step. And uh, I think it's basically enough to explain the idea, which is, okay, so let's do the first level. 
So the transfer matrix acting on these will give, when I try to do pass A to B1, BZ1, I will get these. So I'll have, I'll write explicitly because we need the, And we have these. And now we pass D. And then now I would like to highlight that we have two types of theorems here. We have one that, okay, we have this, oops, uh, sorry, let me correct me. Is this, is this, can be this. Yes. Okay, so we have this type of term. If you look, we, have, we still have a B of Z1 here and the A continues to be of Z. So all this, so we still have for this type of, uh, of um, let me change the color. For, uh, for this type of, uh, of term, we, we still have the hope that we can rewrite as that, uh, uh, that uh, excited state. So our excited state was, uh, it was something like, uh, B, Z1 until BZM. So we created, we create the, you use this as creation operators, you know, we, we just put these uh, Zs that we don't know what they are, but, but we know that it depends from Z1 to ZM. The original um, Z is not here. So this operator is fine. This term is fine. We have still BZ1, BZ2, all of them in the A's of Z. And the same for this one. But when you look this type of term, what you have is that now you have a B of Z. So you never manage to write this again as the, as the excited state. So this is already mess up kind of, uh, of the construction because uh, you need this kind of term disappear because you want uh, that, uh, like you want an eigenvector, like an eigenvalue equation that you want to recover. You just want like, I don't know, T acting on the state giving the eigenvalue times the state. So you don't want extra things. So we call these terms, these, these type of term, unwanted terms. And we need them to cancel between themselves. But these ones we want. So these ones we can, so now we, 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 we have this, this first level. And then these ones we can continue. We can continue to try to pass AZ. And if we do that, we will have again, uh, some terms we don't want. So let me write only the ones we want, wanted terms. So if we do the next level, the wanted terms will be again the ones with this kind of. So we'll have now sinh of Z minus 
Z1, oops, that was already there. But now you are passing to Z2, so you have the same term. It's Z minus Z2 minus theta. Minus Z2. And now you have DZ1, DZ2, and you have A of Z, and then the rest. And for D, for D what we have is plus eta, so the same thing, but with plus. Because we are avoiding the unwanted terms for now. So you solve the wanted ones and then I will explain how you cancel the, the other ones. Oops, this is the... And then you can see a pattern. If you just want to keep always the AZ and don't want this uh, Z, disease come, this uh, ones you included uh, coming here, you always have to keep, sorry, you always have to keep the second term on this, on this. And the other ones we are, are going now at the second level, we call, I don't know, we can call them unwanted too, because we have the first one that we kept here. But if you continue to use the second term, what you get, sorry, it's too small for the type of calculation I have to do. Uh, so if we keep passing to you have the same term with Z1, Z2, Z3. So if you just continue your wanted terms, will be a product of, uh, I don't know, I go one to M. all the Bs, and then you have A acting on Z, and the same. And then these, we know that are just sinh of zeta plus at to the power of the number, the number of sides. And these, what is this? Oh, oops, time zero. And then these, you, you see that, uh, so if we manage to cance cancel those unwanted terms, our eigenvalue, is. Okay, so zero with these, you can just recognize as the, as the excited state. So our again value is just uh, this sinh of z plus n to the power n. plus the one we got from D, which are these. So if we manage to cancel the unwanted terms, we will have these eigenvalues. 
So what will happen is that we will find some conditions for these Zs that we included that are called better roots. Uh, we'll find the, what we call bet equations and then solving those equations, we'll find exactly which values of these uh, Zs work, which ones will cancel the unwanted terms. So the values that cancel the unwanted terms are the ones that uh, will give you the correct eigenvalue. So yeah, well, now we will see how to deal with those, uh, those terms. Uh, any questions from this part? So I think I have to write it again because let me see. I don't know how to use this properly, but it should be a way to. Oh well, I know what's the problem. I was trying with the mouse pad instead of the okay. Oops, I prefer control C but no. Okay, now we will deal only with the unwanted. <laughs> unwanted terms. Okay, so these two we already solved, so let's. And then you had, the, as, well, as we said, we had many levels of, of unwanted because every time we pass a B, we get, we get new ones. So, but you actually don't need to care about the other ones because exactly of that property that I mentioned at the beginning, that the Bs commute, so I will explain now. Okay, so when you have these, okay, you don't know what to do with this uh, B, but the point is that this term is the only one that uh, has this A with Z1. So if I if I compute any of the others, because I started with uh, the B, B of Z1 first, if I, start, if I try to compute all the unwanted terms, those, um, maybe it was not a good idea to delete the, unwan the wanted ones. So if you saw those wanted ones, oh, I cut it, <laughs> sorry, not this. But the point is that, there is no way I could get an A of uh, Z1 because all the others, all the wanted terms that I, I started and then would create unwanted, they, they had a B of Z1 first, if you remember. So there is no way I could get A of Z1 anymore in none of this, those terms. So if I take this and I keep I keep doing, I keep applying these, uh, these transformations. It's just very hard because I, I have to look, show you the equations at the same time I'm, uh, let's, uh, where? let's put this.
Prepositions. They were once. Um, I think now we're not going to stop again. Let's see. Okay, I think this is good enough. So what you see is that if we keep always wanting this A1 to be kept. Sorry, I messed up so much that I got confused. Let me. Okay, so we want to have this AZ BZ2. So we'll keep again this term, but because we want to keep always AZ1, so we'll, we will not, uh, because we want, as I will show you, because the B's commute, I can first do all the cases with Z1. So I'll apply Z1 until, until the end. And, and then I can start the next one, instead of starting with my, my excited state being B of Z1 until Zm, I can start with Bz2, Bz1. And then I can, and then my first A, my A will be with Z2. So, and I can do this with all of them. So this is just a trick. So I don't need to look all those unwanted terms that would appear for all the rest. You just do the simplest one and then you change because you can change B, you kind of think as redoing the calculation and you, and you do it uh, again, starting with BZ2 and then BZ3 until BZM. You just, uh, so I will find one equation that will generalize immediately for I instead of, um, so let's, let's write. I know uh, all this thing, all this confusion I made now, it, it made things confused, but you can, you can ask please if, uh, if I, if I, if it's confusing. So now if we, we want again to, because even if this is like Z1, we know how to act with A and on, on zero. So what we get from here, is this, but now it's Z1, Z2, not Z and Z1. So we had this, um, and we want to pass through all of them. So we will have a cinch of Z1 minus Z2 minus theta over cinch of Z1 minus Z2. Oops. I, we want to pass through two, three, all of them. So this is I. And this gives us B of Z, B of Z2. So the Z1 is missing. B Z3 until BZM. And you have something uh, similar, but with a minus for for the d1 this goes from 1 to m for oh oops this one this one goes from 2 right because the only one that's not here is the z1 so we do again because we kept the z1 on the a and I forgot to hear this cinch. When the A acted on, and then on zero, we got, uh, oops. we got uh, Z1 plus eta to the power N. So, yeah. And uh, uh, here is the same, but with uh, Z1 minus Zi plus eta, 
z1 minus zi. And then when the a acting on, at on zero, it gives just z1, z. So this was for omitting the one. If we had started the calculation with the, the two first, we we'll get exactly the same, but this product will be z2 minus zi, and uh, this product will be in everyone except the two that we put. So we can write these, I'll call these, I don't know, mi. The first one will be my coming from a, when we acted a on zero. So this will be sinh of eta minus zi. This doesn't depend on the, on the product as well. And then these will be i different of j and then from one to m of sinh zi minus zj. So this is just the coefficient. I'm not writing the, oh, actually let's write. Uh, so let's just, So, and then here we can represent as uh, B of Z1 until B, like all of them, except So you will always remove, oh, except I actually. Uh, yeah, you remove Yeah, you just remove the one uh, that is equal, like, uh, because it's the, always the one that your A acted on at the end. It's always the one that's here. So you don't want, so this was a, a not a good choice. It's J from one to one to M and J is different of I. Yeah, this is the best thing. And then you have something exactly, basically the same for the one coming from B. which is this uh, minus sinh. But if you remember when I act with B on zero, I get Z, not Z plus eta. And this product is the same. So it's uh, J from one and J, oops, this looks very bad. Um, J equals to one and J is different of I. There is something very wrong here. Oh, this, there is no eta. If you remember all the denominators in our commutation relations had just uh, z plus uh, z minus z. And then the same as before here. So these were the un unwanted terms. So we have the ones coming from A and the ones coming from uh, B. If we want them canceling, what we need is that they are equal, right? They, uh, so this will give us the condition on this is. So if you consider this to be equal, you can kind of divide one by the other and put one in the other side. So this cancels. So what I have is sinh of eta coming from this, so this cancels.
this cancels as well. So I have Let me see if I missed something. Oh, it was a plus here, so I have, it was a plus here, so I have plus here, because when I put to the other side, I kind of got a minus that canceled the minus that came from. So, this with J. So these, these things are called, these equations are called uh, the bet equations. And then give you, when you solve, it, solve them, you get the conditions on these z's such that that eigenvalue we, write, we wrote is really the eigenvalue. So that formula we wrote is only the eigenvalue if these your better roots, so your better roots, satisfy these bet equations. So now you have some polynomial equations that in principle you can solve on Mathematica. For some models, they can solve this uh, analytically, but most of the cases, no. But you can put on Mathematica and, and solve. So, uh, uh, usually when you see on the literature, they, these come in a, a slight different way, which is they usually send zi or zj to z i minus eta over two, so that these equations, so let me call this bar, just, this side becomes, it remains the same basically. This side doesn't change because there is a, a minus. But this side becomes more symmetric. So people prefer a lot this way. There are all bars here. Bar, bar. Because D and A, when they acted on zero, they gave uh, that uh, eta factor of difference. So people don't like that. So they, they write it in this very symmetric form. But yeah, uh, both are equivalent. You just uh, shifted. So these are the bad equations. And then just solving them and putting these values back on the eigenvalue, on, the, on that eigenvalue equation, like you find the, the eigenvalues. And our excited state was this B is U1. If you know which values We'll, um, so if you solve these and you know which values will give you the correct eigenvalue, automatically substituting these here, computing the B is substituting these here, you have all the eigenvectors. So this gave you both the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of your transfer matrix. And the advantage of this is that we know that the charges, the charges are, are just the, the I, DCI of log. So if you know how to diagonalize um, your transfer matrix, you don't need to diagonalize all your charges one by one. What you can do is just, you, you get your, you take your eigenvalue that you obtain and you apply it. You know that the eigenvalues of the other charges are just the derivatives of the log of 
your eigenvalues. So once you diagonalize the transfer matrix, just by applying derivatives in a function and now in a, and not in a diagonalizing a new matrix, you find all the eigenvalues for any of the charges you want, just by applying derivatives in a scalar function. That's it. I think my time ended. There, can I, are there any questions? Okay, so if there are no questions, let's thank uh, Anna for the very, very nice lectures. Thank you. I, I remind you that uh, you are still able to interact with Anna because uh, today at five, we have the first exercise session and that's actually the only exercise session during which uh, Anna will formally um, be there. Yeah, but uh, I will be here both weeks. So and if anybody wants to talk to me or keep trying the exercises, um, they can talk to me any day in the next, this week and next. Excellent. Then it's also possible to interact with her, of course, uh, also via Slack. So we'll now have a break uh, for half an hour. We are back at 12 uh, Central European time. Silvana, are you there? Yes. Do you want to? Yeah, maybe we can test. Are you ready Maybe you co-host? And I'm making also Eric co-host, so later. Um, should I try to share the screen then or? Yes, please. Go ahead. Okay. Can you see something now? I can see. I can see your screen. Everything is still white. Yes, that's normal, I guess. Okay, so fine. Could you also try to turn on your camera, please? Ah, yes. Do you see me now? Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the size that you will typically write? So if you write this size, it's going to be perfect, I think. Okay, yeah, that's typically how I would write. So this, you can see it on the screen. Yeah, and also at the back of the room. Okay. Uh, this is very readable. So that's good. Sometimes there are some glitches. Okay. I don't some know. Delay maybe or something. No, uh, it's like um, the image gets distorted and uh, we see something else. Ooh. From here, I see perfect. Okay. <laughs>